Hey, Black Cloud Engineers, D'Amico's here, and I'm here to speak specifically on the areas of the cloud. Now, why the areas of the cloud? Because I want to make it simple for you to find what area, what area within the cloud you want to start your cloud career in. You want to start learning more about, all right? Because you don't want to make the mistake that most engineers make and most aspiring to get in the cloud make, um, which is trying to learn everything. Trust me, I'm, I've been in the industry for years. There's no one that knows everything, even about the cloud. However, you can build lucrative careers, you can become a respected engineer by focusing on one specific area and become re becoming really good at that. You don't have to become the best in the world. There's no best in the world when it comes to cloud, all right? There's just people who know what they know and you wanna become one of those engineers that know which, what you know. So. I'm going to cover all aspects of the cloud of the cloud that are important. Um, and within those aspects of the cloud, the jobs that covers that aspect of the cloud. Now, I do also want to say this. These aren't the only jobs out there and available, and these might not even be the only areas. They're smaller components of the cloud as well. But these are the overarching areas of the cloud that I've narrowed down that are most important that are most popular um, and that are easily available for you to break into, to start your learning process, getting certified, getting your skills up, doing your labs, interviewing, and getting these lucrative positions. The first position we're gonna talk about, the first area of the cloud we're gonna talk about is like anything. Uh, it's called, it's the cloud architecture, all right? So think of like a building or any type of, uh, arch any type of infrastructure. It requires blueprints, all right? You're like a blueprint master if you're a cloud architect, all right? The, the a cloud architect basically are responsible for designing and building computing architecture. That's it, all right? You're usually gonna meet with clients. Some client, these are clients that you are, aren't responsible for having to go out and get. They're gonna be assigned to you and you're going to lit, sit down with their POC. You're gonna figure out their needs. And then you're going to go back to your lab and you're going to draw a blueprint in the cloud of how to implement um, cloud computing resources to fit their needs. It's that simple. Now, in a lot of cases, you're only there to meet those clients. So you're only going to do one offs. You know, a lot of the time you're not going to be, you know, sitting with one client throughout the duration of their experience with, you know, your company. Right. Um, sometimes you will depends on, you know, the, the role. And I also want to say this. Some of these roles and blend into each other because they all connect. It's all connected in the cloud. So you may find yourself in a position where they're asking you to do a dynamic amount of things. But don't you stress and don't you worry because you just want to get good at one thing. Remember that one thing. That's all that matters. All right, and that's so that's cloud architecture. Some of the things on a daily basis, uh, you get to work with clients before they get into the cloud or help them get software uh, applications into the cloud. So either you're gonna help them in creating this blueprint for either their entire system or just specific ap applications that they have they need cloud assistance with. So that's what you would do as a cloud architect. Number two, so with, we already have the architecture, um, set up. We already have that area of the cloud covered. Now you want to talk about there's like anything else. How are you going to go about inside this infrastructure? How are you going to move? Right. It's just like a building, just like you're building a house. You have to have your construction workers be able to move on planks, move up and down stairs, X, Y, and Z to be able to actually build things within the house, right? To actually be able to build things within the cloud. All right. So uh, you have you have number two, which is a is called a cloud network engineer. All right. So uh, you work with computer hardware and software to allow users with access uh, to allow users with access to shared resources. All right. Because there's an infinite amount of resources, both on pre on premises and in the cloud. And it's up to you as a cloud network engineer to focus on how to connect those pieces, how to connect those roles, all right? Sometimes even how to build those roles, all right? So yes, you're gonna deal with a lot of numbers and calculations, but if you're good with numbers and calculations, boom, right up your alley. So 
That's number two is the uh, cloud network engineer. All right. Maybe in, again, only focus on one of these. Don't try to uh, trust me. Don't overwhelm yourself with trying to uh, learn each area of the cloud. Focus on one. I promise you, you're going to go a lot far further, a lot faster when you just focus on one area. You'll build out different areas of the, of the cloud and skills as your career goes along. Trust me. All right. Number three is. Uh, okay, so you have your art. We talked about architecture. We talked about the uh, uh, network. Now we're going to also talk about um, automation. So uh, there's an automated part of the cloud, meaning that while things are moved, while thing, while you have the roles, while you have the architecture, you have to have services and applications that run on their own in the cloud without you having to touch them without the client having to touch them. You know, there was updates, there's patches, there's rollbacks, there's deployments, X, Y, and Z. And that is where a cloud automation engineer comes into play, all right? You are responsible for collecting and processing demands to transform, transform application delivery for the cloud in an agile manner. That's it, that's simple, right? All right. So again, it's automate your automation engineer. So you're going to do a lot of coding, coding. That's not really a thing, but you're going to do a lot of uh, um, you're going to do a lot of, I want to say, uh, using Linux or using uh, uh, the command line to or infrastructure is code, a lot of Visual Studio. And it's not as again, don't get intimidated when you hear code. Right. Uh, everything runs on code. That's a whole nother conversation. But trust me, the more you do this stuff and you learn the basics of this stuff, the easier it gets. All right. But again, for those of you who are interested in just making things run on their own, this is for you. All right. So um, you and your team of automation, you're, you're going to work with a team. Now, I want to keep that in mind as well. Nobody, you, you're really going to be, especially when you're new, put on any, any assignment by yourself. It's usually a team. So you and your team of automation engineers are responsible for configuring and fixing automated parts of the cloud infrastructure. So you're going to be constantly, you know, configuring ways to automate different aspects of the cloud or different um, applications that run in the cloud. And then you're always going to be fixing or debugging uh, application automated um, aspects of those applications that are stuck for various reasons. All right. So it may be a role, it may be a bad update. It may be a, a bad deployment or so server might be down X, Y, and Z. Something is causing um, that automation to not automate. And it's going to be your job to go in there and fix it. All right. That's number three. Number four is these are very, this is the very popular aspect of it is someone has to actually create the material, create the bricks. As I say, like when building a house infrastructure, somebody has to create the cloud stuff for to, for the cloud to actually make things in the cloud run. Like it has to have something to do. It has to, you have to, you know, you already have the architects and the network engineers, X, Y, and Z, but now these are the big boys. These are the, the more, these are the important pieces, component, the most, probably the most important component. And that is the cloud developer, right? These are your DevOps guys, right? These are your uh, um, uh, developers, you know, of any kind. Now, here's the caveat to that: you you can be a front end developer that works on the pretty shiny stuff, such as building, making a website look pretty, adding the colors, the contents, the, the information is there is accurate X Y Z. Or you can be a back end developer, which is responsible for making the front end look shiny. So the back end developer runs a lot of the processes to make sure that you're able to process paperwork or process uh, uh, user input or process data that's coming across or process changes X, Y, and Z in the background. So you can be either or, right? Now they do spend most of their time um, coding, right? But they really spend a lot of their time, um, you know, just you know, developing and it becomes a lifestyle, you know, they, and here's the beautiful part about developers is that most cases they have scripts, you know, all developers that I've ever come across, even working on premise, 
have all had scripts. And with scripts are, I think of it like speaking, like an actor has scripts. As you can t tell, I don't have a script. I'm literally going off the top of my head. I have my little notes, but this is all mostly off the top of my head. But I do have some little notes. So it's like being a, so the same with a developer. Like you look at an actor, they're reading the script. As a developer, you have scripts. Um, when you start positions with companies, they're oftentimes going to have scripts available for you. you have, they're just using your knowledge to be able to know how to apply the scripts and how to look for errors and bugs in the scripts if they don't work, you know, or, or they become outdated. So those are, are cloud developers. You're, you're going to find those jobs everywhere. But that's a necessary component of cloud because it had they actually provide the ingredients. Uh, we're going to call it for a cloud to actually function to run. All right. That's number four. Number five is now there has to be an overseer. There has to be someone to look, kind of look over everyone's shoulder, look over the whole entire cloud like a watchman. 